In Australia, we've come a long way from a time when institutions like this were the focus of treatment for people with mental illness. Mental health care today is about treatment in the community, especially by GPs and primary health care, and even online. But not everybody is benefiting from the advancements that we've made. In many parts of the world, people living with mental illness suffer from a lack of access to effective treatments or care. They suffer stigma and ongoing human rights violations. Hi, I'm Professor Harvey Whiteford. I'd like to welcome you to Public Health 7026, Mental Health Across the Globe. This course is about the past successes, current challenges and future opportunities for mental health. But before we get started, I want to introduce you to the team that's put all this together and tell you why mental health really matters. I think I was motivated by the sense that there was an enormous amount that could be done to improve how we looked after people with mental health problems. When I graduated as a psychologist in the early 1980s, I worked in a clinical role in a public mental health service for some years. And during that time I saw just how disadvantaged mental health services were compared to other areas of health. I felt that this was really wrong and um, in terms of social justice and just basic human rights, it seemed to me that there were a lot of things that needed to be reformed. I felt it was somewhere where I could personally make a contribution. I've always had a passion for working and advocating for the health of disadvantaged populations. But what's drawn me to mental health in particular is I feel there's few areas in health which experience greater neglect and inequity. The majority of disease burden of mental and substance use disorders is experienced in developing countries. Yet these are the countries that experience the greatest gap between those that need treatment and are actually receiving treatment. Over 90% in low and middle income countries. One of the most important things is that we do acknowledge your past successes, but you must continue to challenge yourselves to do better, not only in Australia, but across the globe. I think we are becoming really good at measuring the epidemiology and burden of mental and substance use disorders. So the next step would be to expand on research around how to reduce this burden. And so that would include research on the risk factors of mental disorders, as well as strategies for prevention and early detection. Mental health is increasingly recognised as fundamentally important to our quality of life, both as individuals and as communities. Mental health policy now recognises the importance of covering the full spectrum of interventions, from early intervention for mild problems through to more intensive and ongoing support for people with severe and complex disorders. It's an exciting time to be in global mental health. Whether it's uh, epidemiology that interests you, or you have an interest in policy or health systems, whether you have an interest in in populations of high income countries or those affected by conflict or indigenous populations. There are career pathways to and from psychiatric epidemiology for clinicians, epidemiologists, statisticians, project managers, uh, database managers, just to name a few. There's a real need for people who understand the principles and policy frameworks that drive mental health service systems to work in all areas of health service planning and administration. In addition, the new technologies, innovative services and new modes of delivery all need to be investigated from a policy and services perspective. We've come a long way, but there's still a lot more to do. 